By now, you should know I absolutely love college football, but sometimes it really is the stupidest sport we could have ever created. I'm Pete Mundo, Heartland, collegesports.com, covering the Big 12. Welcome in. Thanks for being a part of the show. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. We appreciate you being here. Plus, of course, on the podcast, you know what to do. Had a ton of ratings come through the last few days, but I know, yes, you haven't done it yet, so leave us that five-star rating and review on iTunes. College football is the greatest sport in the country, but sometimes it really is also the dumbest sport in the country. Congratulations to Michigan for winning a national title. Um, you guys deserve it. Heck of a season, heck of a game. I think Jim Harbaugh, if he's smart, is going to go to the NFL. There's nothing left for him to prove. There's nothing more for him to do in college. He's won a national championship with his alma mater, and now it's time for him to move on. But for college football, the final AP poll came out on Tuesday, very early Tuesday morning after the national championship game. And I always like looking at this where you can see how every person who votes in the AP poll ended up voting. And there was one guy in particular who voted – and it is the worst AP poll vote I've ever seen. He left every single Big 12 team other than Oklahoma and Texas out of the top 25. No Oklahoma State, who beat a in the bowl game. No Kansas State, who beat NC State in the bowl game. No Kansas, who hammered UNLV. None of them made a bowl game. None of them made a top 25 from this one writer. His name is Ron Counts. Apparently can't count. He's of the Idaho Statesman, and he released a poll that only had Oklahoma and Texas in the top 25 from the Big 12. Liberty was at 15. Iowa's at 17. JMU is at 20. Tulane is at 21. Toledo's in the top 25 for this guy with the Idaho Statesman. And you can't find Oklahoma State. You can't find Kansas State. You can't find Kansas. They are nowhere to be found in this AP poll. Now, of course, the actual AP poll, the final AP poll, had Oklahoma State at 16, one spot behind OU at 15, had Kansas State at 18, and had Kansas at uh, 23. But according to this guy, no. Now, why am I picking on him? Well, I'm picking on him, first off, because he clearly doesn't watch the Big 12. He's too busy watching, I guess, the Mountain West. Maybe he's got sour grapes over the fact that Boise State never got invited to the Big 12. That's the only thing I can figure, because this does not make an ounce of sense for someone who's trying to be unbiased. But this is the problem with college football. This is a sport that is a billion-dollar sport, and we got hacks in Idaho sitting there determining the final ranking in this sport for all of our favorite teams. Why? Either he doesn't actually watch the sport, he doesn't watch the conference, or he's got a bone to pick with the Big 12. But either way, you cannot have a billion-dollar sport being run out of spite by clowns like this who vote in the AP poll, like Ron Counts of the Idaho Statesman. You just can't have it. A legitimate sport cannot have it. I know, unlike pro sports, you know, it's very difficult to figure out who the best teams are, how to go about doing this. They're in conferences. They're not all playing each other out of conference. But what we do is a flawed, flawed model. And with each passing year, it gets more flawed, right? Before the season, what happens? Same handful of teams end up in the top five, in the top 10, in the top 15. There's surprises. There are teams that fall out. It'll get overloaded with SEC teams. Now, why does the AP voter overload the top 25 with the SEC teams? Because that's what they're supposed to do. And then, by the way, if you load up the top 25 with SEC teams, what happens? Well, you're always oftentimes playing a team in the top 25. So even if you lose, yeah, it's not a bad loss because it's technically a top 25 loss because that's what the voters, the esteemed AP poll voters, tell us. But then you have people like this who have no business voting on top 25 polls in this billion-dollar sport. That has to end, and it's got to end sooner rather than later. 
And this, to me, is the final straw. And we've seen this before from some of these guys. You know, the Big Ten guys favor the Big Ten schools and the AP polls. West Coast guys favor the Pac-12, RIP. Southeast guys or gals, of course, favor the SEC. We've seen this song and dance time and time again. It's as predictable as anything else that we do. But now you're getting to the point where the playoffs about to expand. The sport is growing. We want the sport to continue to grow. We want the sport to continue to stay competitive. And you cannot be giving people the kind of power like these AP voters, even though it's only one guy, right? Even though it's only one, there's also a problem with groupthink in the AP poll. So you got one problem where if a guy gets ticked off at a conference, he screws the conference in his AP poll voting. And then you have plenty of groupthink going on as well. This sport needs a commissioner in the worst way. It needs a governing body in the worst way. It needs to have, you know, a situation where every conference is playing under the same guidelines and same rules. What does that mean? Let's start off with the fact that if we're going to have these power conferences, probably for now, power conferences play nine conference games each. And on top of that, how about this? You've got to then, I believe, schedule at least two other power conference games in the non-con. You get one softball. All right. Not like you in the SEC where they get two, three softballs a year, including one in November. That's got to go. There has to be a governing body that gets continuity into this sport. Because if not, the sport is going to continue to be its own worst enemy. And that pains me to say because I love college football. There's nothing I love more. I love sitting there. You know this. If you watch this show for two seconds, you know, if you're a new subscriber to the show, I, there is not a sport in America. I want to sit on my couch and watch more than college football. But it's hurting itself. And this is a small example, but it's just the latest example of how we're doing something like it's 1974 instead of 2024. We got to move the ball forward in every capacity. 12-team playoff is good. But man, it's got to be a heck of a lot more than that. So I, I had when I saw that, and we wrote about it on the website at Heartland College Sports. So if you haven't seen it, it is up on the website. Go to the homepage. It's under the trending now section on the site. You'll see it right there. I mean, this is not the kind of stuff that we can be having in the AP poll. Meantime, you know, if I tried to get in the AP poll, they'd laugh me out of the building. But don't worry, guys in Idaho are leaving every Big 12 team out of, of uh, his final AP poll early on Tuesday morning, which is just an absolute joke in every which way. Pete Mundo with you. It is great to be here. Hey, by the way, go to the website. We've got our uh, forums that we're building a great Big 12 community around. Click on the members forums tab at the top. Um, sign up. It's free. And you got a great group of Big 12 fans, including myself and many on the staff who are interacting all the time at uh, heartlandcollegesports.com. Click on that members forum tab. Meantime, uh, if you didn't see this, we've got Heisman Trophy odds that are already coming out. And there is a Big 12 player who is in the mix, current Big 12 player, not a future Big 12 player, but a current Big 12 player in the mix. Quinn Ewers with the third best odds to win the Heisman Trophy at 8-1. to one. That's behind Alabama quarterback Jason Milrow. Carson Beck of Georgia, then Quinn Ewers, then Dylan Gabriel, and in fifth place at 10-1 to 1 odds, Will Howard, now at Ohio State. So three guys with ties to the Big 12. None of them will be in the Big 12 next year, but all guys with ties to the Big 12 who are um, receiving Heisman odds for 2024. Can you believe that? Now, in terms of Big 12 players getting Heisman odds. The number one player in the Big 12 Conference next season getting Heisman odds is Shador Sanders, Colorado quarterback Dion's kid. That's ridiculous. There is absolutely zero reason that Shador Sanders should be 25 to 1 to win the Heisman. I you know, I didn't watch a ton of Colorado once they started stinking up the joint. But that is all Colorado hype there is what that is. And I say that as someone who's very happy that Colorado is coming into this conference and can't wait 
for Dion to be in the Big 12. I am just going to be fascinated by that. I can't wait. But come on, 25 to 1, the number one odds in the Big 12 is Shador Sanders. I mean, that's ridiculous. With all due respect, Avery Johnson's 50 to 1 at Kansas State. I think Avery Johnson is worthy of better odds than Shador Sanders of being a Heisman Trophy winner next year. That's how good Avery Johnson potentially can be for the Kansas State Wildcats. But at Quinn Ewers at three or eight to one, that's a surprise to me because, frankly, I'm not convinced Quinn Ewers is going to be the starting quarterback at Texas next season. Are you? I know that everyone's playing it pretty close to the vest right now, but do you really think that there's a possibility that Arch Manning is going to sit for a second straight year. One of the most highly touted high school football prospects of all time is going to sit for a second straight year behind Quinn Ewers. Do you think that? I know publicly everyone's saying the right thing. I get it. You've heard it. I've heard it. I'm just not convinced that that's actually what's going to end up happening here. I think Arch Manning wants to play. And I think if Arch Manning wants to play, I'm not saying Quinn Ewers is, is going to go anywhere. I don't think he can go to the NFL. I just can't see that possibly happening, especially after his performance against Michigan, or excuse me, against Washington. But Steve Sarkeesian, I believe, is going to have a decision here because I understand wanting to sit a year, transitioning to college, learning the system. But if you're Arch Manning and if you're Cooper Manning as dad, you know, you take two years off, suddenly the game, I don't want to say it passes you by, that's not fair, but it's certainly, you're out of it for two years, no matter how many practices you're around, how many practice squads you're a part of, how many reps you get Monday through Friday, it's never the same as game speed. And if you haven't played a game, if he sits for two years, right, he'll have played high school football in 2022, off 23, off 24, theoretically, back in 25. That's effectively three years, nearly, of not playing and not getting live bullets if you're Arch Manning. Is he going to want to do that? Maybe he will. Maybe he knew what he was getting into at Texas. Hey, Quinn Ewers was there when he got there. He knew this was possible. But I would be very surprised if that's actually how this ends up going down and how this actually ends up playing out. So I would not be betting Quinn Ewers eight to one. Dylan Gabriel at nine to one is far more intriguing to me at Oregon than Quinn Ewers at eight to one. That is all about Texas hype right there. In fact, I don't think any of these guys, when I'm looking at the top three, Jalen Milrow at Alabama, Carson Beck at Georgia, Quinn Ewers at Texas, I don't see any of them. There's always that guy that people don't see coming. Last year, of course, it was Max Duggan. But you know there's going to be at least one guy like that that just comes out of absolutely nowhere and is in Heisman contention late in the season and becomes a finalist as well. So just something to keep an eye on and something to watch here as we roll uh, through the show. Now, we have um, a loaded Tuesday schedule in college basketball, specifically in the Big 12. No games on Monday because of the national championship for college football. But a uh, bunch of games. Houston, Iowa State, very good game on ESPN2. Texas, Cincinnati is intriguing. Texas off a loss, Cincinnati off a win against BYU. Kansas State at West Virginia, that's a really good game um, just because you want to see if West Virginia has any, any juice in the tank after getting blown out at Houston. Oklahoma State took Baylor to overtime. They go on the road to Texas Tech, who's coming off a great win against UT. And then a top 25 matchup, the only one of the night, Baylor hosting BYU. Two teams, um, you know, Baylor, of course, got the win against Oklahoma State, but BYU fresh off their loss to Cincinnati, and BYU might end up being a paper tiger in Big 12 basketball. So uh, we'll do some shows throughout the week, talk some more hoops with you as the week goes on. In the meantime, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for being here. And, of course, Leave us five stars on iTunes if you haven't done that yet. Let me get a shout out, by the way. I like to do this to folks who leave us nice ratings and reviews. Uh, this latest one comes from 
believe it's Jess Panic. Jess, Jess, Jess Payne C. Here it is on iTunes. Love Pete's analysis, how he calls it like he sees it, and how he's an independent supporter of all things Big 12. Best college sports podcast out there. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate you. And uh, we're going to keep giving those shout outs to those of you who want to leave those reviews on iTunes. And uh, we'll be talking to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Check us out at heartlandcollegesports.com. Subscribe to the message boards. And we'll talk to you soon. See you later.